Welcome to Clinical Minute. Anna is a 38-year-old woman who began a new sexual relationship six months ago. Since her divorce two years ago, she has had a total of three sex partners with whom she had oral and vaginal, but not anal sex, with inconsistent condom use. She had the Paragard Copper T IUD placed five years ago. She comes to your practice complaining of mild vaginal irritation and vaginal discharge, which she describes as thin and malodorous. She has never been diagnosed with an STI in the past. On physical exam, you observe a moderate amount of slightly yellow vaginal discharge. The vaginal mucosa and cervix appear reddened and inflamed. Otherwise, the exam is Preliminary wet prep results show yeast, absent, which reduces but does not eliminate the possibility of vulvovaginal candidiasis. Clue cells, absent. Trichomonas, absent. Amine or fishy odor on whiff test, elevated pH. The high pH and amine odor are consistent with both BV and trichomoniasis and atypical for yeast, cervical secretions, and normal vaginal fluid. The absence of clue cells rules out bacterial vaginosis. However, knowing that the sensitivity of provider-provided microscopy for both yeast and trichomonas is limited, and that the absence of trichomonas on the wet prep does not rule out trichomoniasis, you proceed with further testing. In the past, trichomoniasis was considered a nuisance infection, but evidence suggests that it is associated with symptoms and with clinically significant sequelae. In pregnant women, trichomoniasis is associated with preterm labor and low birth weight. Treatment not only relieves bothersome symptoms, including vaginal discharge and irritation, but may also reduce the risk of adverse pregnancy outcomes. Treatment of trichomoniasis has also been shown to reduce HIV shedding in HIV-positive individuals, possibly decreasing the risk of HIV transmission to sex partners. In addition, treatment of vaginal trichomoniasis in the HIV-negative patient may decrease her risk of acquiring HIV infection from an infected partner. For these reasons, it is important to test for and treat trichomoniasis. The options for trichomoniasis testing in women include wet prep, culture, point-of-care tests, and nucleic acid amplification tests, also known as NATS. A wet prep may reveal motile trichomonads when properly prepared and read immediately. The specificity of wet prep is almost 100%. In other words, with an experienced observer, there are almost no false positive results. However, the sensitivity is only about 50%, meaning that about half of all trichomonal infections are missed. For this reason, this patient's negative wet prep does not rule out trichomoniasis. A culture of vaginal fluid has been considered the gold standard for trichomonas testing in the past. However, the results may take several days, for men, sediment from a urine sample may be cultured, but the sensitivity is limited. Recently developed point-of-care tests provide rapid results and include rapid antigen tests and nucleic acid probe tests. Ozome is an example of a rapid antigen test. It is manufactured by Genzyme Diagnostics and uses immunochromatographic capillary flow dipstick technology. Results are available in about 10 minutes. A firm VP3 is an example of a nucleic acid probe test. It is manufactured by Becton Dickinson and provides results in about 45 minutes. NATs have greatly improved sensitivity compared with all other test methods. NAT is now the gold standard for trichomoniasis testing and the test of choice for screening asymptomatic women. For diagnostic testing, in other words, testing in women with symptoms, it is reasonable to first do a wet mount or a point-of-care test. If either of these is positive, no further testing is necessary. If these tests are not available or are negative, NAT is recommended. The Aptima test, a NAT manufactured by Hologic Genprobe, is newly FDA-approved for trichomoniasis and is now on the market. 
Labs that now perform the aptima gonorrhea and chlamydia tests can be expected to offer trichomonas testing. This table compares the sensitivity and specificity of the various testing options. The sensitivity of the tests, or the ability to correctly identify individuals with infection, varies. It is lowest for wet prep and highest for gnats, such as the aptima test. The specificity of these tests, or the ability to correctly identify individuals without infection, is generally very high, although the point-of-care tests have a slightly lower specificity. Based on the clinical history, examination, vaginal fluid pH, and amine odor test, you suspect trichomoniasis despite the negative wet prep, and you send a vaginal swab for Trichomonas vaginalis gnat. Given Anna's sexual history, you send another vaginal swab for Neisseria gonorrhea and Chlamydia trachomatis gnats. You also order serologies for syphilis and HIV. The options for testing men for trichomoniasis are more limited. There are currently no point-of-care tests for men, and gnats are not FDA cleared for men, although this clearance may come soon. The only current, officially recommended options for testing men are wet prep and culture of a urethral swab sample or sediment from a centrifuged urine sample. Anna's vaginal swab gnat for Trichomonas vaginalis is positive. All other tests are negative. Given the lab results, your diagnosis is trichomoniasis. You consider how to share this information with Anna in a way that will focus on the positive aspects of sexual health and reduce the stigma that is sometimes associated with an STI diagnosis. You say, the lab tests showed that you have a very common infection called trichomoniasis. It is transmitted from person to person during sex, but most infected people don't realize they have it. It can be cured. I recommend we treat it with an antibiotic called metronidazole. You prescribe metronidazole 2 grams orally in a single dose and ask Anna if she has any questions. When answering Anna's questions, you should consider that many patients lack basic understanding about sexual health and STI prevention. Counseling messages you share with her should try to normalize sexual health and avoid judgmental language. You tell Anna that her current partner also needs to be treated and arrange for him to be prescribed metronidazole. 2 grams orally in a single dose. Another treatment option for either Anna or her partner is tenodazole, 2 grams orally in a single dose. Some experts prefer tenodazole over metronidazole, especially in men, but it is more expensive. You tell Anna that she should abstain from sex until she and her partner have completed therapy and the symptoms are gone so that she can get rid of the infection. You also tell Anna that use of condoms every time she has sex is important for keeping her from getting other infections, including HIV. You inform Anna that the recurrence rate of trichomoniasis is relatively high, and therefore you make an appointment for her to return in three months for retesting, as recommended by CDC. While most recurrent trichomonas vaginalis infections are thought to result from reinfection due to exposure to an untreated partner, Single-dose treatment doesn't work as much as 10% of the time. Anna returns for a visit with you three months later to be re-screened with NAT, which is negative. She reports that her partner was treated, but the relationship ended two months ago. She is currently not sexually active. You reiterate the importance of consistent condom use with new or casual male partners when she again becomes sexually active and encourage her to follow up in one year for STI testing at her well woman visit because of the risk of infection in women with new sexual partners and the importance of finding and treating any infections as soon as possible. You also reassure her that her copper T IUD will continue to prevent pregnancy for at least another seven years and that IUDs do not prevent STIs.